Real life street stars. Hold on, man. Put your hands together. It's a monument. It's a monument. A bunch of real ones in the building. A bunch of real ones, man. This right here, uh, for the most part, I don't think has ever been done in the city of Dallas that I've seen in my years. Um, it's been different attempts to try to make something like this come together. And it's been different platforms to try to put it out. But, um, man, from this real life street star side of things, uh, where a lot of most of y'all we know right. to what um, y'all are doing with this and what we're about to talk about is probably unprecedented. Yeah. So, for it's gotta be probably the most people we had on the couch, too. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Clap it up. Clap it up uh, for, for Bruce Bring it. Bring it all these brothers and sisters through here. Yeah. Might be some people behind the wall. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of motherfuckers. <laughs> man. God. So, let's do it like this, man. Um, uh, we got um, a phone call. Uh, I definitely the person out here. Shout out Raheem's out. He's out winning awards and stuff uh, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, he called us and put Bruce Wayne on the phone and was saying, "Man, I really want to do something, bring a situation to y'all's platform that you know really ain't been done." And I think he said, "Man, I got like six guys I want to bring." And then I think the number, hey. the, the, the number jumped to, the, the, to, to, to about ten. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, "Boom!" They they come hey, all the way. I want to know what was the text message sent by Bruce to get y'all to come out here. <laughs> Man, I mean, look, it be honest. Monday yeah, he known for doing that, man. You know what I'm saying? He's I have like, your hey, families. <laughs> 48 <laughs> hours, man. You got 48 hours, man. <laughs> Not for real. So, for real. so um, man, we're gonna do it like this. Uh, uh, for the even the shirts that if you know those at home can see, man, we got the chain maker shirts. Therefore, we're about to talk about something that's gonna. We got the heavy hitters of almost every section. I know, I don't know how 4K, 6K this camera is, but you can see on each shirt, these are representatives of different hoods and different spots and different suburbs out here in the city and even beyond. And uh, man, should we go through and get everybody's, uh, uh, should we introduce everybody, Jeff? Should we, should we go through everybody? Because I really, th there's some hitters here, man. Yeah. So let's do it like this. Uh, Bruce. First and foremost, um, thank you for bringing this together. And what we're about to talk about is, of course, um, hopefully going to change the landscape of the way the city even moves. Um, I want you to first introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what it is you do, and kind of just what your mission is behind what this is right here. Hi, my name is Bruce Wayne. I'm a uh, president of Urban Specialists. Uh, and, my, and my mission for this whole deal is, is everybody's mission is here, man. I knew... Most of, I know most of these brothers, if not all of them, and I know that they are solid in their own section, not just in their section, but the whole city of Dallas, right? And if you know our mission for the last 21 years has been about how can we stop the violence that we see in our city, how, we, how can we prevent mothers from bearing their children prematurely, and then how we can negotiate these beefs that's happened between neighborhoods, right? And so, man, we just had this vision of saying, man, let's, let's call up. Uh, these brothers that we and sisters that we know that's very influential who has influence that if they st stood on the battle line or stood on the front line that they can change the tide of this city right so we just start making some power uh, let's let's let you use it like this uh the microphone is going in now. okay uh, where i start at yeah. oh yeah so we so we just said let's call some brothers and some sisters that we know have influence that we all got relationship with, that we know solid, that can just show their face, show their support for this platform, right? Because everybody that you see that's here, they solid. They ain't, it ain't nobody that's propped up. These are brothers who been in the struggle, been through the fire, that we know that if they utilize their influence, they can stop a lot of the stuff that's happening because they on, on the front lines. And these brothers have been doing it on their own in isolation in their own neighborhoods. So I was just saying, man, how can we bring these brothers, how can we get them together and show a unified front? So it's not a front about us condemning or criticizing, but us saying, man, how can we get some love? How can we show unity amongst us and then how we show it to the rest of the world? How we show the rest of the world that you can bring all neighborhoods together in the name of positivity and unity and love and loyalty. So that's what you see right here. And hopefully, man, as we get ready to go into the summer, that these brothers will make relationships with each other and in their neighborhoods to stop our young brothers and sisters from killing each other. So that's what this is about, man. Just highlighting those who are doing this work, man. I got some interesting brothers with me and sisters with me. And I'm just passing the mic and let them introduce themselves. All oh, right. My name is Mar Butler, I'm the community leader. Um, Started off as a credible messenger, 
uh, came through OGU uh, years ago, man. I've been hitting this ground running ever since came out of prison in 2012. Glad representative West Dallas, Texas. My name Vito. I'm uh, East Dallas. Uh, 2020, 2013, I got out of prison. I've been working in the communities, working with our kids, you know, working with our OGs, our original God. That's what we call our OGs. We're original guys uh, leading our leading each other and servicing our kids to become leaders. And uh, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. Um, I'm Bobby, um, also known in the streets, Dead Eye Bobby, from Holland Hills. Um, been in the streets all my life, you know. Uh, probably one of, the, one of the graduated from college, showing, trying to show these kids something better, show them that I can, I mean, it's a better way out in and out of this, uh, the streets or whatever. I started, uh, the Hood Football League, you know what I'm saying? I was one of them to start that uh, Hood to Hood Football League where we got all the communities together, you know, every neighborhood in Dallas, getting along, Bloods, Crips, all that, you know, we all got along, getting out there, you know, getting the situation to where we all got along, just out there having a good time without killing each other. So, I mean, I feel like we got a lot to bring to the table. I like what Bruce is saying and what he got going on, and I'm behind him 100%. First and foremost, man, all praise to the Most High, man, for allowing us all to be in this room together Amen. to be a service to our community. Um, I'm OG Jay Holland, South Dallas, but the earth is my turf. I've stayed a little bit everywhere. So, I've, I mean, I graduated from Hutch. So, you know, I'll tell you a whole lot. I went, I'm from South Dallas, but I graduated from Hutch. And I'm here to really just let uh, a lot of these youngsters know, man, your ego is not your best amigo. Mm. Free game. Hey, peace, man. My name is Seneca Kamir Alma. I uh, want to thank Bruce for giving us the opportunity to come out here. Uh, originally from Pleasant Grove, but like I said earlier at the uh, OGU, half and half, man, I grew up in Cedar Hill. I'm a suburb baby up here, but still, still represent him. And I spent most of my life in federal and state prison at the age of 19. And uh, my message is mindfulness, yoga, meditation, fitness, um, self-defense, but also really just focusing in on identity crisis. I think a lot of us are struggling with identity crisis out here. And uh, we want to, you know, that's my message to the young people out there is to really find your most authentic self. I'm Lil Alvin from South Dallas and my message is every consequences come with an action. I'm Ray Dub from East Dallas, East Dallas Project area. Uh, I'm here um, on behalf of the OGU and the Urban Specialists. I'm here to support unity and love. Corey Cleghorn, a.k.a. Corey Clout, uh, Clout Records, Dallas, lived in Oak Cliff my whole life, part of Urban Specialist and OGU. Hey, I'm Dino Brown from uh, Oak Cliff. Um, really here just supporting Bruce Wayne, man, supporting a lot of these brothers. I know a lot of the OGs around here, man. Been around for a minute, seen a lot of shit going down, and uh, we just here for the positive, man, just trying to get everything together and do the right thing. What's up, I'm Low Deasy, artist management, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a change maker, and being a change maker is gonna be a game changer, you feel what I'm saying? Uh, just uh, shout out to Bruce Wayne for putting this together, and you know what I'm saying, just keeping this thing rolling, trying to bring this community together. I'm uh, Terrence Bowleg Randolph, uh, Oak Cliff, born and raised, man. Um, man, you know, we been in and out the communities, man, you know what I'm saying, trying to get the kids together. Um, ever since I've been in the community um, of Cedar Crest, where I grew up and playing for the Cummings, you know what I mean? So um, it's really important, man, that we come together and, and show that we got some unity to let these kids know that there's it, love everywhere, man. So, you know, we just here to make it happen. Uh, Uncle Jojo, you know what I mean? Empathetic asshole, enlightened hypocrite. Say what you want to say about me, ask me if I give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Proud alumni of SCBU, sophisticated crack baby university. You know what I'm saying? FOE, black man, I'm not so foe. It's fatherhood over every hood. BOA, I ain't talking about Bank of America. It's brotherhood over any hood. We gonna scream until it's overstood. You know what I'm saying? First black love superhero, man. Captain Love Deposit, this is my cape. And uh, man, my missus, man, my message is, uh, man, it, it got to come from us. You know what I'm saying? And, and it got to come, come from us, not because of us, but in spite of us. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, uh, we put a lot of the people in front of these kids, man, and we thinking we doing good bomb, 
But if I can't identify with who in front of me, you know what I'm saying, then we doing more hurt than harm. So a lot of times we got a lot of people off in this room that might not step forward, you know, and might not because they feel like they can't, but you don't want to do it. You know what I mean? So that's my missus, man. Fatherhood over every hood, brotherhood over in the hood. How y'all doing? Um, I'm gonna meet the eight hours representative. Uh, I'm here today because I'm I was once part of the problem. I'm also part of the solution, you feel me? Since I've been out of federal prison, I've been with Bruce Wayne on the same type of march, you feel what I'm saying? So we here, everybody. We here. I thank y'all for even coming, and I appreciate y'all for watching, for sure. Let me say, let me say. Look, North Dallas, Texas, too, in case I didn't see it, North Dallas Projects, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, look, Roseland Homes, but we service we service all around. So we got the fifth man, you'll pull up to the pump. I heard some few people say Highland Hills. Man, we throwing the party, free gas at Ingram's and Highland Hills, too, man. You know what I mean? So we don't discriminate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Veronica Wilson with Urban Specialist, uh, originally out of West Dallas. Um, my thought process is behind every cause has an effect. So you're going to either be a part of the problem or the solution. I'm Tabitha. I'm Tabitha Wheeler, and I am um, a change maker. But I'm also, <laughs> I also am. Uh, I did. Uh, I sold drugs for twenty something years. Went to prison, came home. I've been a saint since. <laughs> but I, I really work. I work uh, with our kids, inspiring them and taking them places, and not just taking them. Not to collect kids from my neighborhood. I'm a Bontonian. I got a North Dallas shirt on. I did live on Maple a little bit in my team, so I'm yeah. going with it. Uh, but I'm from Bonton, but South Dallas. But I work for all of Dallas. When I, I take children places, I don't believe in taking just kids from South Dallas. I believe in grabbing them from a little bit of everywhere and taking them somewhere. We're taking 25 kids to summer somewhere this summer. And they won't just be from my neighborhood. We pick them up everywhere so that they can be friends in other areas. And then I do a lot of work fighting the fight f for us at the city level, at the county level, and at the government level. And put, I'm in a place where I can do those things for our communities. Man, peace, family. Uh, my name is Terry. I go by Coach X, uh, CEO of the Action Network, um, registered member of the FO, uh, Nation of Islam, uh, FOY former baseball player and uh, played in the Major League Baseball, played pro football. I'm actually not even from Texas. I'm not from Dallas, so uh, I'm from North Carolina, but I believe that wherever you land, you should give service to. And so what we do with the Action Network, we believe that the purpose of education of any kind, the purpose of education and knowledge is to cultivate and extract your gift and talent. So if you rap, you sing, if you can shoot that ball, if you can throw that ball, you can hit the ball. Why did God give you that? Inf why did God give you that power? And it's not just to be successful personally, but He gave you that power to be an influence to people. And so, when you find out what we do is teach, man. When you, a lot of us find our passion first, but when we start learning ourselves to, to realize what our purpose is, and you start introducing your purpose to your passion. It's our responsibility now to figure out how to be impactful with it. So that's why everybody in here, um, as you see, different hoods, everything of that nature. But this is this is the real call. See, it ain't about praise. It ain't about reward because, as we know, man, all praise is due to Most High God. So we really about their service. You know what I mean? And no talking. So how y'all doing? I'm Speedy, uh, Oak Cliff. Keys and Crocker here, Western Park Apartments. Uh, play for the Oak Cliff Jeff, the real black and orange. <laughs> nah, but seriously though, man. Uh, <laughs> nah, but, uh, but seriously though, man, I had to, uh, I had to leave Dallas, man, to in order to come back. Like I went off to school, probably one of the best uh, decisions I made in my life, man, and. Came back home. I'm an educator now, probably going on on eight years. And my message is that it starts at home and it takes a village. Because there's a lot of, I'm in middle school, six, seven, and eight grade, teaching Pleasant Grove uh, at Florence Middle School. And again, it starts at home and it's going to take a village, man. That's what's up? No, I got them on. <laughs> hey, uh, <clears throat> I'm Black Tubbs, man. Uh, I'm a representative of West Dallas. Right, uh, oh, okay. I'm a representative of West Dallas. I know they were saying about. 
not discriminate, but I kind of discriminate a little bit. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the founding president of, of an organization called Connect to the Connection. And I'm saying we, we try to lock in with, with the disconnected, you know, people, you know, well, kids and things like that in the community. And, you know, for me serving 15 years in prison and getting out, you know, uh, you know, trying to instill in the community, man, something that I wish that somebody would have been able to do with us. So other than that, you know, we just about just connected, man. And and what Bruce Wayne uh, putting together right here, man, uh, I thank God for it because it's aligned with our mission. And, you know, we all up in this together. So uh, man, I appreciate that. All right. Uh, hey, Mr. Lucci. Side of the city right now, you know what I mean? Um, from entertainment to promotion to influencer, I'm a strong believer in uh, education, uh, information, because our education ain't right if it ain't the right information that they're learning. I'm a strong believer in giving back. You know, I'm probably one of the ones that you see that they talk about on the blog, too nice for the city, but it ain't that I'm too nice. I just love art and I love my city, and I, I want to do different than what people did for us when we was coming up. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So that's really what I stand on. And like when you ask about that call, like how did that text message go? I just want to speak on that because um, if you see everybody in here, they came at a drop of a dime. You know what I mean? I didn't have Bruce Nate Wayne number saved in my phone because uh, I lost my phone. I had to get another one so right. I didn't have his number saved. So he texted me at like almost five in the morning. I respond like, man, who is this? Bruce Wayne? I'm there, no doubt, and I'm here. You know what I'm saying? That's so that's how it is. Lead by example, you know? Yes, sir. And I'm Taylor Simone. Um, I think I'm the last person. Um, I don't normally tell people where I'm from, but it's Saint and Saint Augustine, Pleasant Grove, <laughs> Grove Side. I'm a product of a mom that said you can go through things, just don't look like it. Um, I would consider myself a connector. I connect people, and I'm everything business. So. Most people know to come to me when it comes to business, to grow your business. I work with a lot of kids on understanding what your trade is in order to turn it into a profit. So that's what I do. All right, let's do it like this. Thank you. But, hey, before you jump in, let me let me say this real quick. And I just want to kind of level set and then we can just jump dive right in. I just want to talk about, I want to say this real quick. It's kind of like framework, right? Please, let's go. Just tell you what it is, Joe and Jeff. This is what it is, right? I'm going to give you an example. In South Africa, they had this park called Kruger National Park, right? Yeah. And they had elephants there, right? And the elephants, the park grew in elephants. They started just growing and growing, growing, right? To the park ranger said, man, we got to do something because we can't sustain this, right? And so they said, man, we got an idea. We're going to fly these elephants to other parts of Africa, right? And so they built these harness, these nests. They were going to airlift them. And so when they got ready to do it, they realized that the, the, the harness that they built couldn't take the bull, the male bull elephants, right? It, they weren't strong enough. So they decided, they said, man, let's take the, the juvenile elephants, the young elephants. So they flew these elephants right to another part of Africa. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And so when they, they, got, they got those elephants to Africa, in a couple of weeks, they had another problem, right? White rhinos were ending up dead. So at first they started saying, man, it's the, it's, the, it's the poachers, right? It's the game hunters. They killing these rhinos for their tusks, right? Yeah. Because these rhinos just kept ending up dead, right? And so then when they, when, they, when they looked at the rhinos, they still had their tusks in plaque. So they said, nah, it can't be them killing them for their tusks. So they installed some cameras, right? And when they installed the cameras, right, they found out weeks later that the juvenile elephants were hunting down the rhinos killing them, right? Just mm. parading in gangs, killing them, right? And they looked at that, right? And they said, damn, how are we gonna fix this, right? And so somebody got smart. They said, man, we gotta figure out a way to get those bull male elephants back to this, to this part where they at. And so they, they built some bigger harness and they got those big male bull elephants, right? That they had separated and brought them to the after Port Africa where the young juveniles were. And then in a couple of weeks, all the bizarre behavior, all the killing of the white rhinoceros stopped, right? So what you see, what, what I'm saying right here, what I'm saying is, what you see right here is bull elephants, right? Mm -hmm. What we seeing around the country is our young brothers and sisters who don't have bull elephants in their in business. They don't have men 
positive men who can model what real men are in their lives, right? And so what's happening? When you look around the country, they are killing each other because they don't have that love. They ain't got no male elephants telling them how to have that love and how to love each other. They don't have that. And so what you're seeing right here is these bull elephants, man, and mothers, right, who are coming together to our young people to say this is about love. So we can kick it. I just want to say that. We like kicking this out. Yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah. that, that just lets you know what it is. Um, so let's do it like this. Uh, let's give it some perspective. Um, first and foremost, uh, by a show of hands, uh, how many of y'all actually grew up in a two-parent household, uh, mother and father, same mother and father? Okay, 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 okay. How many of y'all um, uh, have kids? Okay, okay, that goes to show. Um, how many of y'all uh, have a college degree? Okay. And how many of y'all have either seen or been inside a jail or a prison? Okay, okay. So let's do it like this. We, I wanna do it like the sandwich effect. I wanna start with the positive, then we're gonna talk about the negative, then we're gonna end with the positive. Um, for what y'all see going on in, a, I think there was a list that came out of the 15 worst cities to live in. And luckily, Dallas, Texas was not on that list. Mm -hmm. So I think we are trending in a good way. You know, I mean, I see Missouri, Louisiana, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of situations, Chicago and things like that. But Dallas was not on that list of top 15 worst cities. Um, so something's triggering right. I want y'all to speak on as far as what do y'all see the youth doing right that's probably making that go an upward trend? I mean, anybody could uh, speak on this. Well, I guess since I got the microphone in my hand, I can start. Um, <clears throat> what I see, the part that's trending right is the, 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 the structural systemic support system, right? And when I'm, when I'm, what I mean by systemic support is that you have some activists that understand that you know racism and poverty and and everything that there's they run synonymous right as you you just relating to right we know that lack of education leads to poverty and poverty leads to crime these are the things that we know and you just made evidence of that so you have people that are serious about reaching out and they provide that form of leverage so what i'm seeing in this generation is it's almost like the reinvention of the 60s where you have this real tenacious, like when they go hard, they go hard. Like if they are smart, man, I see children, man, now they run circles around us like light years and they are already making five, uh, you know, they making five figures now and six figures now and they're not even 25 years old in the tech field. Different things of that sort, right? They can understand coding and Python and cyber securities and stuff. And they are taking those monies. They know fintech and stuff, and they take it that money and they're 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 recycling that back into the neighborhood. So they're creating their own community, right? And so that's the good side of it. The bad side of it is is that as the saying goes, those who fail to learn their history are doomed to repeat it. So what we are what we are witnessing is. A lot of children just like they come up to us and a lot of us like, man, we just need some game. We don't know. The problem is that they don't they don't have nobody around to really teach or show them because we are not unified to show them what happened to us. Where did we fall? Right. And so when you come about that, that's that. Well, I'm. Um, let me get out of the way. No, 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 you but, said, boy, you, said, you said something. You said something. I, I, I want to say the youth uh, are doing everything right, and they thirsty and hungry to do the right thing and for righteousness. You know what I mean? It's us that's doing things wrong. It's us that's not giving them uh, options, solutions, pathways, you know. So, you know, for instance, in my neighborhood, you know, I got a program, Brotherhood Over in the Hood. We started a book club, you know, so I ride through the bricks. And uh, I, I ride through the bricks and, you know, they got these little pellet guns, little shoot guns, bang, 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 bang. They just shooting each other. So I, you know, I don't try to come down on them, but I let them know, look, man, you, you, I, I gave them this talk, let them know about the condition and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Just let them know, but you can't do that and choose the program. Which one you want to choose? I choose the program. You know what I mean? So boom. But when I go back through there a little bit later on, it's a hundred kids. All of them got it. 
You know what I'm saying? All of them got the guns. All of them out there practicing and shooting and conditioning each other. You know what I mean? Why? Because that's the only thing that's to do right there. You know what I'm saying? But everybody want to be a part of book clubs. They want to be, they want to get out the environment. You know, it's just up to us to give them. So, so my answer is that the youth doing everything right until they get to a certain point. And it, it's nowhere to go but wrong. I, uh, I also, you know, me being in Dallas and being an athlete and also working Dallas is a rising athletic and entertainment city. Mm -hmm. And uh, these young people are seeing the young athletes before them go to college, going to the league. You know what I mean? They, they seeing the entertainment, they seeing the YouTubers, they seeing the bloggers, they seeing this stuff too. So um, I really believe that nobody gets anywhere without a coach. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I use athletic language, but the first coach of life is mama. You hear me? Yeah, that's that's big coach. Yeah. So so what's happening is we that there's they don't have that excuse to say, okay, I didn't have this, right? Because when you got coach in your life, though, wh how can a kid that's so bad he'll go to practice and run through a wall, yeah. run his tongue out his mouth? You know what I'm saying? And he gonna keep going back. So it's not the lack of discipline. They love discipline. Mm -hmm. They just have a, another way of showing that they want it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So as we know. When when you like when you have somebody that don't like to be in school, you got to find ways to put them in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the field is. That's what that microphone is. That's what that studio is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really you got to and I, and I always tell people watch that old talk. So you're getting people you don't understand you when somebody goes to a, a, a microphone, right? That microphone ain't going to talk back. That's you talking in it. And so it's you. It's a way to vent. It's just that sometimes we don't got old enough to stop hearing and stop listening. You know what I'm saying? As a coach, you got to find ways because you can't coach everybody the same way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I really feel like, you know, just the rise in, I mean, you know, you got Sock winning state championships, Duncanville state champ. you know what I mean? We winning state championships across the city. And so it's making young people feel like they not like, you know, uh, they don't have that opportunity. So that's what, you know, I believe. Okay, I'm going uh, I'm to add to that too. Uh, one of my main things I've seen as far as the positive thing that I've been seeing with the youngsters, it's been a lot of entrepreneurship, more than I ever seen in my entire life, man. These kids are starting their own businesses. They doing, they opening up salon, they doing nails, they, they uh, blog, whatever they doing. I see a lot of entrepreneurship. You see, I really feel in my heart, I don't think, I don't even think a loser wants to lose. They just never took the time to be coached by somebody who can teach them how to win. Thanks. I, I think that um, one of the things that I see that they're doing well in our generation, we was told like we can't speak. We can't really tell our truth and tell how we feel. This generation is very open. They are they they are very, they active. They've activists. They're doing things. They're 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 opening doors. And a lot of times, one of the things that my motto is that. Sometimes the Bible says that your gifts and talents will make room for you. These kids are going and finding new gifts that's not introduced in their neighborhoods. And we're failing by not fighting the fight to make sure that new things are happening in our communities, that they're being able to see stuff that they've never saw before. Whenever I do something with a kid, I take them out of our neighborhood at all times because I took kids just to the movies. And then I intentionally took them to a higher movie so that they can pass through a neighborhood that, that they had never saw with manicured lawns and cars mm -hmm. and things and tell them that, hey, you can achieve these things. And also being they're learning to be educated in different manners. They're not taking that traditional school and we're, and even if they're leaving school, they understand it like, hey, they still learning. But the level of being conscious, they are conscious. And what we're feeling at is. We're not allowing them. We're not listening. We're not being, we're not hearing them out. We're still looking at them as kids because that's what our parents condition us to be. They condition us not to say a word, not to speak out, not to this. And these children will tell you exactly what they want. They've told us in meetings that they're, they don't like coming to like sit downs like this because who's there at one o'clock in the morning when I need you. So when we having, when we sitting with kids in meetings and then we leave and telling them that we love them, but then when they call at one o'clock in the morning, they don't have nobody to turn to. So it's, it's part think, of this mentoring the, the parents also, because it seems like. Definitely. It starts, it starts at, at home. home. For sure. Into that, the parents, what is happening is the parents are 
we leaving the parents at the scenario. The schools are beginning to do wraparound services for school. They, the one of the schools we talked to is the new John Lewis Social Justice School that's coming at of your homes. Mm -hmm. That principal is saying, "I want wraparound services so that my kids, my my t my parents can be educated also." And then making sure that the, the parents know when you graduate, when your child graduate, they need to go to school and they get to go free with it, and they are being able to do that. So I think for me, um, I. When I talk to like my friends and the people that um, my village, right? So I remember growing up. One of the things that our parents used to teach us was uh, do what I do, do what I say, do not what I do. Right, right, right. But that's completely wrong. Like that's completely backwards because ultimately you're supposed to be doing what I do because I'm supposed to be leading you because I'm your spirit guide. And so we have definitely failed the children in a major way. So it's our responsibility to go back and fix the things that we've m messed up. So we're not pointing the fingers at them. And I'm like sitting at the table with my 17 year old and my eight year old like, well, how can we fix this together? Cause clearly it's not right. And like everybody was saying, it's our fault. So we got to fix it. And in order for us to fix it, we got to come together type of spaces to be like hey I need you I don't know what it is that that's going on and I ain't never seen this before so I can call Tab I can call Boleg I can call Bruce I can call Taylor I can call my village and say hey this is what my 17 year old is experiencing or this is what my 8 year old is experiencing and I can get that thought process so we can fix figure it out so you say uh, keep it positive we're on a positive note so right. um, what I'm going to say positive is um when, um, when you asked the question, how many of us was parents? Um, I didn't see everybody, but I raised, I looked back and I saw most of us parents. We know the struggle that we went through and we don't want our kids to go through the same thing we went through. So uh, we're not raising thugs. We're not raising uh, the ones that want to stay out in the streets all night, hustle just to make a dollar. You know, we, su we supporting and supply, we taking care of our kids and we're trying to teach them the right thing. So therefore, if you see that, at us, the ones that are here, and we being positive role models, you know what I'm saying, positive gotta follow, positive gotta follow. And like back in the gap, when we was growing up, it was more of like, when we were doing homework or we wanted to play our game or something like that, we was talked about for playing our game all day because you, you wanna be out there in the streets. But now you making money playing games. Like they're getting paid for playing games, they're getting paid for YouTube, they're getting paid for, all the social media, so hey, it's easier money than out there. You know how we, when we was growing up, easy money was out there on the streets selling dope. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying, we cut up a, a hundred slab or something like that, we get out there on the block, sell it. All right, that was easy money to us. They easy money is YouTube, you know what I'm saying, blogging, yeah. you know, uh, uh, playing the game. Oh, I know somebody that's a millionaire walking around Dallas because they, they play video games all day. We didn't get that. That's real. And then another another thing too, man. I want to say this too. I want to, uh, man. I want to apologize to all the youngsters out there who, who fathers uh, abandon them, whether it was prison, whether it's baby mama drama, whatever the case may be. And I'm and I'm gonna use myself for an example, man. I remember when I was hustling in the streets, and I had a little baby. I was so busy hustling, and my ego was so big that. I wasn't gonna bow down to my baby mama. You know, it was gonna be my way or the highway. And I was chasing a better life, right? But I was neglecting my, my responsibilities, right? And so for me, man, one of the hardest things that I had to accept was that I contributed by being absent to any of the neglect that my kids went through because I was, I was so full of ego, right? I think a lot of times, um, when you look at these young people, man, they so bitter because the relationship didn't work between the mom and the dad because the mama was probably just a little fling or the daddy was just a little fling and there wasn't no love there. It was just hit and quit and a baby happened and child support happened and then what ended up happening is the mom and the daddy can't get along and then the kid grow up because ain't nobody thinking about the kid and the kid grew up with so much animosity and oh, so yeah. much resentment yeah. and so much hate. By the time they get 13 or 14, they get a gun with a stick on it. They'll mow anybody down. And so I think what's important, man, that we that we have to say is that as, as a father, I can only speak from a man perspective, as fathers, man, regardless to whatever the situation is with our baby mamas, that we have to begin to fight harder to be in the lives of our kids. And there's no excuse for that. It's no excuse to say, hey, 
I, I can't stand her because that kid didn't ask to be here. That kid is collateral damage <clears throat> in that sense. We have to fight. And for mothers, have to be saying we have to put our difference aside with our baby daddies. And we have to allow those fathers to be in their kids' life, man. Straight up. And, and if you know any, any of these brothers, man, the positive, a lot of these brothers right here, I can, I'm talking about from Bobby to Lucha to Tubbs to everybody, Maul, everybody here. One thing I can say about this group, everybody here understand that and they giving back to those young fatherless kids, man. And so the positive thing is a lot of the young people that we see, regardless of how society have told you to look at them, they are yearning for the love, man. They yearning for the mentorship. They yearning for an OG or a man to take their hand and say, let me walk you through this landmine. They yearning for that, bro. Thanks. Good I me, think you was me, uh, Yeah, okay. on me. You know, uh, piggybacking off uh, what Bruce Wayne was saying about, about what the kids are doing positive right now. And I would say, man, they looking more yeah. and they listening more. Yeah. I'm saying, like, to a whole nother level. And then they learn, they learn more, right? And and I say that because, you know, just doing 15 years and then getting out, it was a transition for me. And I end up, I end up transitioning a lot faster because I started being around the kids more, but the kids were teaching me the things that, that I needed to catch back up on. So other than that, I'm saying, I wasn't getting taught certain things by adults as far as uh, transitioning back into society. And the kids are the ones that's impacted society. And those were the ones that I can say, man, they helped me really be where I was because they let you know exactly what was needed and exactly what was wanted. So that, that was positive on my, my aspect. That's right. Hey, I'm a, uh, you wanna go? I just wanted to piggyback real back, real fast off of what he said, and that's why we call it legacy building. We don't necessarily call it mentorship, right? You know, uh, mentorship, I feel like that's one of those words that when you hear it, you already have an idea of what you think it is. But what Tubbs just described is legacy building because a lot of us are finding or have found parts of our manhood, you know, through pointing to these kids. So as we point into these kids and building them up, they are building us up as well. You know what I mean? So we teaching them about legacy and building their legacy up, but our legacy becomes greater by working through them. So we, what he just described in my, you know, our site is legacy building versus mentorship. Yeah. All right. So first, I would be curious to know what the criteria was on these good and bad cities per se. But since we don't necessarily know that, uh, I think there's three key things to uh, better in a person's life. Exposure, which is information, economics and heart change. Heart change is spirituality. And I think right now in today's time, you have more economic education and exposure and information than before, as everybody's pretty much said. Yeah. Right. So when you, when you begin to put that into place, uh, you have a more open mind. I would also challenge the idea, if you get a hundred kids, and I know this from spending most of my life in prison, I didn't talk to so many dudes on lockdown, one-on-one -on -one in the cell, away from their homeboys, when I'm doing yoga meditation, Seneca doing all that extra stuff, I'm, I'm talking to a completely different individual, one-on-one, -on -one, than I am with all his partners. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. So, so when you get a hundred youngsters and you line them up, Majority of those youngsters don't want to be out here killing niggas, yeah. right? Like in a heart, 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 yeah. right? You have a small uh, a minority that might be on that, but majority of people, they, they, they humaneness speaks up, right? Yeah. So with that being the case, when you combine that with exposure and economic education, I think you have a better opportunity to empower the youth. Yeah. 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 I want to I wanna thank Bruce Wayne for, uh, for, for Invite me out here because this is this real good for me. I wanna I wanna thank real life real life y'all for having us out here, man. Yeah, sure. I uh I did 21 years in prison for a, a murder that I didn't commit, and uh I got out in 2013, and uh I started doing this work. But I remember in the beginning when I was doing this work, I was volunteering, just coming off my own, just off me. And uh Bishop Omar, rest in peace, Bishop Omar. Rest in peace. Yeah, he he had me uh. He had me going to these middle schools and stuff, talking to the kids. And uh, I, was, I was complaining, bro. I was complaining because in my mind, I felt like I was supposed to be exonerated. I was supposed to, you know, I, didn't, I seen myself being exonerated from prison, not coming out here having to reintegrate back into society with no help, with no type of, you know, direction. 
you know, but thank God that I had good people in my life, you know what I'm saying, around me that was helping me, helping me God. But while I was at them schools complaining, the kids, I'm, and this is just what Tubbs said and what Bruce Wayne said, uh, the kids, bro, they was coming to me with real life situations. They was telling me stuff like, man, I feel like I'm gonna be next. And I'm like, next for what? Next to get killed. And I'm like, I'm like, dang. Mm -hmm. Then they, all they say, next to kill somebody. So I'm like, but there's some pressure. You know, and I'm thinking about gas money and stuff like this. And I'm, you know, trying to reintegrate back into society. So, but that leadership and Bishop Omar, he's he put that in. Once you become a leader, you give up your right to be selfish. You know what I'm saying? I can't. And so I that it, the light bulb just really came on for me. Then at that moment, the light bulb started coming on, but it came on then just just to let me know, you know what I'm saying, that my contribution to these kids, like, yeah, I can get money for being for being incarcerated for 21 years falsely incarcerated i could get paid for this i went to a exoneration today a dude shout out to tyrone day thank you for the justice for for exonerating that brother today after he did 26 years but but that justice could happen for me as well but that ain't gonna bring them 21 years back and so and so when i'm pouring into these kids when we pointed to our kids the only way like i can get them 21 years back is if i can not let that happen to them or that this don't this don't come upon them you know what I'm saying yeah. what what we went what i went through and what a lot of these other brothers yeah. dealing with yeah. you know and That's i see and i see the the positive because our kids are hungry our kids really I, uh urban specials are we i'm an urban specials we got young urban specials working with us a 20 year old this this little brother he's just hungry. he 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 can go either way he can go that way but he he he's saying Rito, man, being around you, I could be around my homeboys, but they don't, I can't get nothing. But being around you, and I'm telling him, man, but you know so much, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you teaching me, you, you showing me stuff. So, you know, it's just, I, I, I feel as, as, as far as everybody, you know, I feel responsible for what's happening in these streets, you know, for, with our kids. You know, I feel like we, we hold a big responsibility to this. So, I appreciate this, man. That's so what I want to do, um, thank y'all, thank y'all. That's very positive. I heard about accountability. I heard a village, you know, we need to have. I heard, you know, the kids are doing businesses, which is great. Now, um, I want to get into uh, a little bit of like what y'all see going on in the negative, man. I want y'all to sound off, man. Even the ladies, I want y'all to sound like, like daddies or something, you know. I want y'all to kind of, you know, hold the mirror up to these kids and, you know, tell them what y'all doing. Uh, tell them what you see them doing that y'all just really just don't understand or either just need, they need more guidance and, um, and also, I want y'all to speak on either, why do y'all see it? Like, is it uh, pride? Is it ego? Is it just not having the knowledge of what y'all see these young kids out here doing when it comes to either killing, playing with guns, going out here robbing, stealing, and not trying to get out the mud like some of y'all probably did back when y'all was younger. Um, so go ahead, let's try to keep it under one minute because uh, I know everybody's gonna probably wanna speak. Uh, but definitely go ahead and start as far. Tell me what y'all see these kids doing that's Probably in a negative like that, you you know we got you know hold the mirror up to them. Uh, I would say uh, as far as the negative, body kill. had consequences at home. Like I said, it starts at home. Being an educator, you know what I'm saying you try to uh, instill discipline. You don't got no discipline at home. You don't got no consequences at home. You come to the school that like a middle school teacher. It's it's hard to fight. You know what I'm saying being a, being a middle school teacher. You don't have no discipline at home, or if you don't have no and do whatever you do. I mean, whatever they want to do. So you being a teacher, not being a parent, they looking at you. You not my daddy. You not my uh, you not my mother. You know what I mean? But a uh, a real life experience for me dealing with my son, getting phone calls from the school, me being a teacher, having to leave my job, go to the school because I'm gonna ask him, man, why, why you doing this? Why, why you doing what you do? He said, Daddy, because you're not a, you're not as hard as I mean that you used to be. Damn. So them kids. They be looking for, like you say, they be looking for their structure. Should teachers they, be able to whoop kids? Yes. Yeah, I don't spare the rod. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need your clerk. <laughs> so, so, so let's say you're in that position, right? And you're a parent, but you're feeling overwhelmed. Like, what advice or, or you know, what can y'all offer for people that are probably just feeling overwhelmed? Like, man, I don't know what to do. I'm a parent. I'm just. <laughs> my, my response is always, man. I wish it was the. 80s or the 90s, hey man, <laughs> go on, get down on them. But like I say, it is, it ain't like that, man. But these, they, they be looking for structure though and discipline. So 
So for me, I'm going to say, one, to answer your question, it does take a village. Because sometimes for me, when I'm overwhelmed as a parent, I have to call my mom or I call my sister or call JoJo and be like, hey, my boys are tripping. I need somebody to talk to them. That's not me. But I will say one of the things with kids, um, a lot of kids lack respect because they don't know what it looks like. So from me going into certain schools and speaking to kids, I learned that a lot of kids don't even get told that they are loved in the morning. Oh, so wow. I asked a lot of students, I said, who told you they love you today? More than 80% of the group said nobody. Dang. So me as a parent, it made me cognitive as a parent. Like every day when my kids wake up and get out the car, I need to make sure that I tell them that I love them. They know that they love and they know that they're not walking into this school and nobody is thinking of them. Yeah. And then another thing that I, I realized is that kids lack confidence, reassurance, and positive representation that looks like them. Yeah. Mm. And you have to continuously reassure your child you are smart, you are an educated black young man, you are a beautiful young woman, those type of things. You have to instill that confidence in them because if they don't know that they can do it because you're not letting them know that it can be done, then they're not gonna know. As well as you have to walk in representation of what you want them to be. So with my kids, I make sure that they see as much as possible when it comes to me. No, there's no perfect parent, but I always tell people, learn from the mistakes first and then create your own path because nobody wants to make the same mistake twice, whether it's your mistake or my mistake. Mm. I, I gotta, um, I'm gonna say this again, once again, to go back to coaching. Right. Uh, you take little league football to where you got coaches out here for real, man. You got, I mean, coaches lost his life out here. You know what I'm saying? In Little League football, right? right, right. right. So you got coaches who are really ops with each other. So what you think they create with the kids? To when, they, you, when you see the other uniform, yeah, you see op, right? And I'm saying op is a mind frame too. You know what I mean? Not knowing that one day, one day them kids might grow up me in high school be teammates. You feel me? So understanding who's on your team, who's not on your team. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying this, and I, once again, I speak sport terminology, but it's the same thing for our community. Who's on your team or who's not on your team? Just because everybody wear the same jersey don't mean he a good teammate. Yeah. You feel me? A good teammate gonna hold you accountable. You know what I mean? When you're trying to win the game, though. You feel me? Because when you're trying to win the game, we, we running one play, but everybody got responsibility to, to run their, you know what I mean, to do what they supposed to do. You know, I played quarterback, right? And I learned something. I, you know, people used to give me a lot of praise, but I, I'm not even a praise guy. Yeah. I gave praise my center, right? Because nothing start without him. This dude don't get no credit, no shine, but he willing to protect the quarterback, protect the running back, also point out and, and also direct the offensive line, but he don't get no praise, right? Yeah. So the same thing with the kids. Instead of trying to win the trophy, man, at the end of the year, man, you got to celebrate them small wins, man. You know what I mean? If a kid go from being super bad, bad grades and all this stuff, man, you come home and that's where the village has to be tight. So when the parents are in uh, communication with them coaches, now we know how to reward so it ain't playing mom against daddy. You feel what I'm saying? So now the coaches ain't just trying to win the game because my thing is you bad at school, I'm going to make you suit up. I'm going to make you practice. I'm going to make you go through everything, but you can't play. And I mean, I'm standing on it. Yeah, because you're going to appreciate that later yeah. on in life. You know what I'm saying? To understand that you got to you got to work. You got to be held accountable. You got to be committed and everything else. So once again, I, I really think it's, you know, the village coming together and and, one, and not to go long. But also we, we talked back in the day. And one thing that back in the day we had was the elders more so than anything. You know what I'm saying? People ain't let us crash out, man. Right. You can't you can't let no a young man crash out. You know what I'm saying? So. Man, and let me let me say this too, Terry, because y'all just said a couple of people said it, and you just hit on it right. That op mentality. I want y'all to know if y'all watching this right now, man. This is this is eight or nine different neighborhoods, parts of the city, and we didn't all sit down like this. You know, I came from a blood neighborhood. There's some crip neighborhoods in here, and we didn't all sit down like this. I remember case in point back when we I was going to Madison High School, right. Madison couldn't win no football game. They couldn't win nothing. Because you had Park Row in East Dallas. And, and the dudes from Park Row in East Dallas, they didn't block for each other, right? And I remember them conversations. Man, I remember conversations, my partners who went to, went to Madison, I ain't blocking for that Park Row nigga, you know what I'm saying? And they never won nothing, right? We went into Madison in 2000. God bless Omar soul. We went into Madison in 2000. Grover, Doodoo, shout out to them who started with us, man. 
and we begin. We did the first gang peace treat in the city. We did the first gang peace treat in August of 2000, right? And we began to work with those youngsters from Parkwood. It's just a testament that it can happen. We started working with those youngsters from Parkwood and with them youngsters from East Dallas, right? And we started working with them. I remember being over in Parkwood. I used to stay in Ebon. And I'm from East Dallas, right? I used to stay in Ebon. Jane Jane, Stack, Look Crow, all them, man. Them dudes love me to the day because I, because I killed the op mentality. Because I started seeing them as my little brothers and my little sisters. And they love me. And we started working in, 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 in Madison. And, man, I'm telling you, right today, Madison is winning championship because it ain't you no know, such thing as Park Row and East Dallas beef no more. That's testament that it can happen. But we got to kill the op mentality. That's what's so important about this, having everybody sitting up on this couch from different neighborhoods unified, not unified. Ain't nobody ego tree. We all are solid and made, but we're saying together, man, we stronger. So when we kill that op mentality for, for ourselves, then it plays out with those young people. The problem with our young people is they got a, it's a lack of love. Mm -hmm. It's just pure, just a lack of love. It ain't no, it, it's, you can go through everything, but the problem is they ain't been loved, man. And this is so important because every brother and sister that's represented right here, they going to love any young person regardless of what neighborhood they from. I can go to North Dallas over there with JoJo or over there with Lucci, and I'm going to love on them young person. I ain't going to love on them from a, from a distance or uh, polarizing because I'm from East Dallas. No, nah, these my little brothers and these my little sisters and anybody that's trying to solve what's happening in the neighborhood, you have to come with that mentality. I, I hate that, that, that separative mentality, man, because I think that's the biggest challenge that keep our young people from... Uh, Coming together When they see us like that They see us showing favoritism And we Because we, we'll have this affinity For our neighborhood And we don't know As as a dust We passing that thing on You know As opposed to saying Man let me go down And holler at Lucha or Let me go to North Dallas And holler at Jojo Let me bring some Like Tablet said Let me bring some young people From Bunton And take them over to North Dallas So they can start Building them relationship When you start seeing that happening Across this country That's when you're going to see This whole idea Of, of us killing each other Or not having the affinity For each other That's when you're going to see That disappear And so we got to all work that I don't care who you are Man you have to see Young people Regardless of your neighborhood That they grew up with you You got to see them As your little brothers Your little sister And you got to love them Unbiased man yeah. you, When you do that love I don't care who they is Man I'm going to be quiet them young people to respect you. I got dudes out Park Road who love me to this day because I always show love and, and I always accept them. I love them to this day. Yeah, he, he uh, day. yeah. <laughs> and, and this you gotta understand because yeah. I like I'm I'm a, I'm the youngest. You feel me? And this guy raised me. You feel me? Not saying oh you know he I lived with this man. You feel what I'm saying? You know, and for so long he been trying to he was he been trying to plant that this seed in us since we was youngsters. You feel me? But you know everything around us could grab us. Right. You know, and I ran away. I ran, but he always told me like you, Maisie, you gonna come back. You know, but you gotta understand the reason why I'm coming back is because I looked up to him. You feel me? This like a father figure. You feel me? So it took. Every day that I that I live with him for him to teach me this. You feel what I'm saying? And when I left, I didn't get no more knowledge. So I fell in the streets, in the beef, in a in a in a, you know, to the feds, you know. But look where I'm at now. I'm easy gonna come back. I'm right here with him. You feel what I'm saying? So, so, so yeah, you say uh, we on the negative, right? We on the negative. Yeah. I mean, um, First of all, I'm gonna tell y'all, man, we've been doing this for a while, man. Uh, Omar, Bishop Omar, yeah. uh, Bruce, Corey, uh, yeah. even Dion was with us for a while, you know? So yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we've been doing this for a long time. When they brought me in, I feel special because they brought us in. And we tried to do something positive. When I say we brought these neighborhoods together, it ain't always been as bad. I mean, it calmed down. It had, it had you know what I'm saying, its peaks and it had its lows or whatever. But we did something positive for the neighborhoods around Dallas, and, and it calmed down for a good minute. But what I see negative is, man, around here is like, I'm going to tell you, being from Holland Hills, like, I mean, you can play tough for all you want to. Y'all can play tough for all you want to. Man, I went to uh, Holland Hills. I stayed in Holland Hills. I moved back to Holland Hills after I came back from college. And um, and then we'll go to the apartments. But the last two years on 4th of July, I've been going to the apartments, you know, because we have a firecracker war and everything. I go to the apartments, they shooting dice and doing the stuff that we used to do, but you got everybody running around there with a Glock, with a switch on it, and a stick. So they got a switch and a stick on it, so that's an automatic with at least 30 bullets in it. 
So even though I got mine for protection because everybody in Texas can carry a gun now, unless you're a felon, but we still, ones with felons still carry their guns or whatever. But what I'm saying is, when you go to a neighborhood and you see everybody with a stick on them, it's like you may, it make you nervous. Like, you already tell me, I don't want no problem. I was just talking to little Alvin from South Dallas um, a while ago. I mean, I'll be having mine, I'll be like, man, them, they don't have no, they don't think twice. They not gonna swing, they not gonna try to fight. They, they, hey, the first thing they wanna do is shoot a gun. And so that's what I see negative about her. What I, what I see is, um, let me give you a quick thing. Before um, Urban Specialists crunk up this section from, they was originally up on the, another name. Me and Anton, I had, Anton had a, a Bell's bum on on, Mar, on Malcolm X, me on um on Elsie Faye, and I had I've been having a title service for for almost twenty years on Malcolm X. Now give you, he's he's an ex gang member. I'm a. I, I'm going to say it because he usually say it. I used to be Lady Harron. I ain't never been scared of the streets. I'm Bullets fly, I can go to sleep. It got to the point where we were scared. And what we did, what we didn't see was happening was community was not community. Like they wasn't community policing. Now listen, I'm not going to tell it on, I don't tell it on the block boys. I'm going to go to the block boys and help them. But if the block boys make it where I can't sleep at night, we got a problem. We got a major problem because I got to be able to sleep, right? You hustling, I've been there and I just need you to transition from the streets. And I tell youngsters that, I need you to transition and I'm going to help you get there. But if you make it where I can't sleep at night and my business is suffering, we got a problem. And me and, me and Tongue, we took a different approach. And I think that was one of the first times that I saw community and civil come together and come up with a real conclusion. We was about to fight the city. The city wanted to fight us. We was yelling and screaming. And at the end of that meeting, we come up with a conclusion. And for four months, when people were saying Little World is dangerous and it couldn't happen, two years there wasn't a shooting at Little World. Mm -hmm. That because we we got together and we put that effort together and we had everybody, parole, probation, we had the uh Councilman represented. We had so many people in the room, and I didn't even know what that work looked like. I just knew that, like, I was mad at the city about something else, and I used something they was using against us to get them in the room, and we worked out some problems. And the problem is, our youngsters will do what we say if we are, if we don't allow them to do any and everything. When we stopped the Little World for years, has been a problem in South Dallas. Right, right now there ain't a security guard there, and they back shooting. But for two years, we got a peace of mind. And Tongue ain't scared of you know. <laughs> same reason why, you, same reason why he called me. Same reason why he called me Lady Heron when I'm trying to be when I'm trying to be the city zoning commissioner when I'm in the city zoning commissioner. Yeah. When I'm the city zoning commissioner, I want to be held to a high hill kind of be laid hair on. And I'll be like, I don't sell those drugs anymore. Right? I don't do that. But also, I see that we don't, we are not being empathetic. We're not, we like the people that go to church, get saved, and then when the girl walk in with a little bitty dress, they forget they used to be on the street. We forgetting that as hustlers. We get ourselves cleaned up. We, 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 you know, get a little bigger. We ain't, you know, fine. Some of the men get big bellies. And, you know, and so we forget that we used to be them youngsters, right? We used to be them youngsters in them streets. We used to be a little hard-headed. We had a little bit more respect. You know what I'm saying? The prisons, the, the prison system took OGs away, and then these youngsters were left with people that really wasn't OGs. Mm. And so these youngsters are imitating men who really are boys, and the real OGs are having to go back and double down and retrain them. When, we was, when I was in the streets, and, and, he, and some, most of these men around my age are a little old, when they was in the streets, we had OGs that really said, you can't do that. Or if they seen a young player that played ball or a kid, they poured into them. Now these OGs are letting these youngsters Let's leave. Know what OG is. Can everybody oh, give a definition of yeah. OG? For OG, for me, it was like, I get called out of OG and I'm a female, but it's because they saw me, they seen me in the streets, and then they see me transition over and they see the difference. But I got credibility that says that at one point I was a part of what they used to be a part of, but now I'm a change. I'm a change it. Yeah. Everybody get their idea what OG is. So, so, a lot of people. OG for me. That's yeah. yeah. Let's clear it up. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one uh, I'm gonna make it real short and sweet. I feel like an OG is really uh is a father figure that some people don't have. 
a dude who's gonna step in that position and tell you something that's right. Cause a real OG ain't gonna send you to crash out. He gonna tell you, no, don't do that, man. You know what I'm saying? He'll treat you just like he would treat his own son or treat you how he would want to be treated. And one of the biggest things, uh, the problems I think with a lot of the, uh, the kids I heard, uh, one of the problems is uh, once the parents fail, and we gotta learn this as parents, we failed as a relationship with the mom or the dad, however, whoever was at fault, we failed as a relationship. Let's not fail the kids. Let's not fail as parents. Let's not fail as a community. You know, it's something that you can do. See, a lot of people leave relationships and they leave them bitter. And then they put it in their kid head. Hey, he ain't no good or vice versa. Whoever got the custodial parent, it's a, it's a battle between who's right, who's wrong. But if we just put that to the side and concentrate on feeding that kid, like watering a good seed with that kid, we're going to get a better result. Yeah. yeah like, I feel like an OG is... A, a life coach, a mentor, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that looks like the person who's looking up to them and they can relate to everything that they're going through and just giving them positive influence. I like it. I think an OG for me is being able to take a negative and turn it into a positive and just using your influence for whatever the good may look like. Yeah, I think a, I think an OG is somebody when when the young people deem you as that you can't call yourself no OG. Yeah. First, no, first no. off, uh, I, yeah, I, you no know, like no, no self titles. You know what I mean? I I realize I realize, man. The more I just I'll, I'll be forty two in July. And, and and more and more I keep walking around, man, I get called unk all the time. Unk is a new OG yeah, to me, yeah, you know what I mean? Up. And also, but for real though, I think that is the person you get that title because you've given them something that they need. Right. You know what I mean? Something right. different from what they see every day. And when you get them that, they give you that respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then when you get that respect, man, that's when you can use that influence. You know what I'm saying? Because they're giving it to you. You know what I mean? So I, that's what I believe OG is. You like OG, which one do you prefer? Me? Nah, I'm coach, man. I'm coach. <laughs> yeah, but nah, I get, I'm, I'm, I like OG. Yeah. I say uh, a OG is the youngsters allow you to hold them accountable. Yeah. Then you lead by example. And uh, another thing, man, when it comes to them kids, we can't give up. Yeah. It, got, it can be the worst kid out there. We can't give up on them. Right, I'm saying it's, it'll be a lot of parents. I'm, I'm tired of him or tired of her. Yeah. I'm saying they put might put him off on grandmama, brother, I mean, however it go, but we can't give up on them kids. Hey, so what advice would you give to somebody who wants to talk to a kid, but they just scared to talk to him because they might be, you know, they might, <laughs> you say, you know, like, so, 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 you know, some of them kids, you know, like hey. they might be afraid to talk to the kid. They might you, not you, want You got to be relatable. Yeah. You got to be relatable. So most, I mean, most of us probably done been through what they going through now. Yeah. You got to be relatable, especially like in, in, in uh, uh, my bad, in, in education, a lot of these teachers, they ain't been through what we've been through. Right. So they can't relate. So as far as, like I say, same thing with, with the police, how they hire police officers. Right. A lot of them can't relate where they patrol it. Same thing with the schools. I'm saying it, it ain't a lot of teachers at my school or in the inner city that look like me. Right. So a lot of kids, they, they gravitate me. I mean, gravitate towards me and the teachers be like, right. I mean, get your son or get, get your daughter. He's a football player. He don't listen, blah, blah, blah. They just, they just can't relate. And I don't never forget where I come from. Every year, every semester, how I start off my class, I tell them, I know y'all in middle school, I'm gonna treat y'all how I would've wanted to be treated in middle school. You know what I'm saying? So I respect them. Off the must, I give them respect. You wanna say it? You wanna I know you about to say something about that? Yeah, I was gonna say, just to, just, just to reiterate on what that brother was saying is that, um, especially when you're talking about OG, it just, you know, when you're talking about that, it still goes back to what you were saying. Um, I was in one of the, the barbershops and uh, it was two year, little youngsters coming through there. They was high, you know, one of them had a, a I don't even know what they call the guns nowadays. Yeah. I couldn't even recognize it. it was so big and long, bro. I, I, that's the only thing I know. <laughs> but it was dragging his left side of his pants down, you know, and he was high, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. And then you got older cats like me, get, I'm getting a cut, but they looking at him shaking their head. And the difference is, me growing up, my definition of the OG, somebody would have pulled him over and you would have had two different kind of conversations. Like say, bro, you running around here carrying a gun with kids getting their hair cut in the seat. You need to cut that gun off in the car if that's what you want to do. But you can't come in the barbershop with that. Or the other OG would be like, hey man, 
You know you can't carry no gun and be high at the same time, nigga. You messing up the game. What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? You're going to yeah. shoot yourself out. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot. What kind of game is that? Because it ain't no, how you going to hustle when you're doing that? So you have two different kinds of conversations, but it still be love. But the real OGs wouldn't have been afraid to tell you that. Why? Because they was always present. I see you every day. I know your mama, your grandmother, your great grandmother, and your uncle that sell cookies after church. The one that sell weed too. I know all them. Yeah. You understand? And they weren't afraid to pull you over. We can't say when we talk to people, see the difference between me and you back in my day, we didn't do this because you creating separatism when you even having those conversations. Wow. You making it sound like my generation was better than yours. Yeah. But nigga, it was your fault how their generation got it there hey. in the first place. Yeah. Hey. Because you stop talking, you stop being present. If you listen to all the average time, the shortest time of uh, time, prison time is mine. I did 10 years. Everybody else, 15, 20, all that stuff like that. That's not by accident, bro. Yeah. That is by design. Yeah. When you have something by design, man, to take the OGs and the, and the men up out of the community, what's going to happen to the community? You ain't got no community no more. You got a bunch of mothers doing like others' mothers do, trying to call somebody when their son become of age because a mother cannot teach a son how to be a man. No matter what, we can raise them, we can love them, but you can't. And so what we do is we can't, we can't come out, man, trying to fit in. Yeah. We have to be fitting on the outside. I could have told everybody what West Dallas Cash do. That was been me. My uncle was Chicago Red. I already ran with Yellow Shoes. I was then took Club 220, age 14. Everybody know me. But if I go back as Cash, everybody going to be expecting me to do what Cash do. That's why Cash was dead at the prison wall. I became Mark Butler, the financially independent entrepreneur, great husband, loving father, Successful motivational speaker, teacher, leader, and all the why? Because that's what the new generation need to see. You don't need to see what you done already been through in your hood. In order to do different, you gotta see different, bro. It seems like a lot of older, a lot of older dudes try to still be young and be these young kids' friends, and therefore don't really. Man, let me let me, like let, let me say this too, man. Just to hit on what Mar said. Cause Mar just said a, a mouthful, man. Look, man, it's, it's like this: a dog, cat. Elephant, tiger can sense fear. They sense fear, right? What happened with a dog or cat? Somebody sense fear. They, they gonna attack you. See, in them young, in them youngsters, right? They sense fear. They sense when the OGs are afraid of them, right? Yeah. And, then, and then the youngsters know when the OGs full of shit and they bullshit. Yeah. See, they gonna call you. They gonna call you out on that too. See, but if, if, if but if your track record good and your love is real and it ain't biased and you respectful, man. Them youngsters are respect. I don't care how many big guns they got. I don't care how many tattoos yeah. they got. They'll love and respect you. See, you can't. She said it earlier, man. You can't forget that you was once one of those youngsters. Right. And so, you know, the only way somebody could approach you when you was in that mindset, they had to be coming real and correct. Right. See, if yeah. you ain't coming right. real and correct, them youngsters ain't going to respect. I never had a youngster disrespect me. Never yeah. had yeah. a youngster disrespect me because I always came real. And, re and, they, and, they, and they can sense the fear. They know when you scared of them. You know, and I don't never approach young people out of fear. I always approach them out of love, man. That's what I think is is apparent in this room that you approach them with love. Our young people want to be loved, man. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many guns they got. I don't care how, how much weed they smoke or what they look like. They Them want youngsters that want that love, right. man. And if we understand that, if you listening and you understand that and you give them unbiased love, them youngsters, you can tell them anything, man. They'll listen to you then. They just don't listen to hypocritical people who uh, telling them to do something that they tell them not to do something that they doing. You know, right. you can't be you can't be robbing and jacking and all this kind of stuff that you trying to tell the youngster who trying to give him some money. He can't rob and jack. Just imagine, I'm gonna be quiet. Just imagine, because we got some music heads in here. We got some people who are in the music. I like what Lucha and Bolet, everybody doing, right? Just imagine if this this entity right here, right, real life. Just imagine if we begin to bring these youngsters together here in Dallas, right? Start bringing them together because they respect these individuals here. Just yeah. think about what it'll do for the music. If you got some youngsters in South Dallas, Oak Cliff, Pleasant Grove, rocking with Luquan Luke, uh, 900. Just think about what'll happen when we do that. See, we can't get nothing going because we perpetuating the, 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 the attitudes that keep us separated. But think if we thinking like some real business man and some people who trying to put our city on and I'm saying I'm hooking up with Lucha, I'm hooking up with Ma, I'm going holler at Tubbs in West Dallas and we bringing youngsters with us that we mentor and they building them relationship, then you, you increase the base of the music. 
or, the, yeah. uh, or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? That's how we got to begin to start, which I think we are. Yeah. That's how we think it, man. And that's the love right there, bro. That's how we blow this city. If we keep on operating in silos, uh, I'm, hot, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, but we not connecting it, connecting the dots, man, we ain't going to get Dallas going to continue <clears> to be <throat> trying to get on. So Dallas got too much talent, man, for us not to be on and mm-hmm. not to be networking and not to be. We got too. It's love right here. Look at this, all love. Yeah, because they don't do this. This yeah. is all love right here, man. How did you, how did you on, build John. this? For you know, because this is it, was, this, it. It wasn't me. It was already built. These are all just relationships. We all got relationships with each other. This ain't no, this ain't none. I did right. spectacular. It's just these relationships. All I did was text everybody and say, "Hey, show up." Real life. That's the biggest platform in the city. These hey, brothers hey, doing hey, something. Hey, else. Doing their thing. They doing their thing. Doing it's doing no thing. reason that these brothers shouldn't have access. To, to, to pop they shit on real life, you know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Man. The story, That's all that happened. A lot of stories to be told through yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I gotta say this because everybody seemed like they grew up when it was um just seven digits and a phone number. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we now we in the social media area where these kids have so much access. Where I'm looking at all these hoods, and you think with social media it'll be easy to connect all these hoods together, but it seemed like it's really separating and dividing the hoods. How do y'all feel social media affects these young kids and how should they use it for a positive versus a negative? How can they use it as a positive tool? Uh, uh, how can they use it as a positive? Well, I, for, well for my mind went straight to the negative yeah, as far as... as no, 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 no. We, we see the negative on social media. We see the beefs and all that. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. are they using it as a negative tool? Because we need to, again, show the mirror to these kids. I mean, because that's how they getting the drops. That's why they That's how they knowing where they at on the snaps. They, they stalking snaps, pulling up on you. You know what I mean? And, and my thing is... You know, uh, the village is sick, man. You know what I mean? Kids waking up, they ain't need no breakfast. They shuffling off to school with teachers that don't love them. They coming back to the neighborhood. It ain't no programming. It ain't nothing to do, right? You know what I mean? They on, a, they on their way to the slaughterhouse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, kids getting killed, right? You know what I mean? Just in my neighborhood, we done had a few kids get killed the last few years. You know what I mean? It ain't no counseling. It ain't nobody help them unpack this. None of this, right? So it's death right outside my doorstep. Then I jump on social media, what I'm seeing. Niggas getting gunned down everywhere. You know what I mean? I mean, so not only death is at my doorstep, now it's in my phone. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that social media and just being inundated, inundated with death, inundated, inundated with, with, with death. You know what I mean? Come desensitized. And you come yeah. desensitized. Not only do that, you accept. You know what I mean? An early death to the fact that you're not even prison. You living, but you a mummy, man. You know what I'm saying? So, so versus uh, killing. I mean, being that they make the decision to kill. So for me, man. The, the village is sick, you know, and we have to be the light, you know what I mean? And that's 24-7. Like somebody said, uh, call on the phone at 1 o'clock. I got this thing that we do, and, uh, and uh, you know, Bruce Wayne, he an OG, you know, and, and I, say, I call him an OG not just because of the life he led and what he survived, you know what I mean? For me to be an OG, you got to be able to o- offer an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? No, because no matter how much love you got, how much knowledge you got, if you can't give a kid a pathway to something else, whether it come from you or through you, you know what I mean? Then you're going to be going to his funeral or you're going to be putting money on his book sooner or later. So for me to really be an OG, you got to be able to offer some type of opportunity. You know what I mean? And they got to come from you, but they got to come through you. Man, I just want to say this real quick and I'm going to let it go because I know my brother big back here, he's been real patient ready to speak, man. Hello. Brother Seneca. Uh, look, Everything that we've ever wanted in life, like period, you can go all the way back in history. People took the power away from us by smothering it, teaching other people how to do it. And I'm going way back to the 60s, man. When we were on the rise in the back, I wasn't born in the 60s, but I'm just saying I'm going back to the history of the 60s because that's when we were most risen, most prominent coming into our own life. When we were doing that, man, it was Black Pride, it was Sisters, it was back, it was Garveyanism, it was Malcolm X, it was Martin Luther King. Everybody was really running rapid because it was pride. We learned how to stick together. And then the government, the system systematically took one piece out of it and deflated everything. You empower, you you take power out of something when you can instill something in it that slowly drags the air out of it. So their their goal was after a while you take you do something to take to take the power away from the black man, remove him from the household because history already shows that seventy seven percent of black families were full. There was no there was no and now later now today seventy seven seventy seven percent almost over seventy percent is single family. That is not by accident. That is by design, bro. 
Right. Yeah. So the same thing with social media, everything, man, you can take the power away from it when you give when you give education to it on how to do it. And, and a lot of people are not educated. They're being they're entertained by social media. But social media wasn't even been meant for us to be entertained by. It was for business people in the beginning. Facebook was actually the re of a telephone book that was strictly meant for business people to, to talk amongst each other so that we wouldn't get any information, right? But it became something different. So that history in there and teaching people how to become owners of this stuff, stop being puppets, stop being entertained. If you're gonna be in social media, start you a business. Let's start doing that. Let's create social media schools. That's what we did in our nonprofit. We want we teach kids on actually how to build their own social media business. You want, okay, you wanna be on here all the time? Start it, start your own. So if I start your own, then I, I know for sure you you yourself are not being conflicted by all of these other things that people find it being uh, uh, dragged into the nuances of killing and all this other stuff and feel like you have to be just led by and have to respond. Cyberbullying and all this stuff like that, man, that's a real thing. But we have to be cognizant and empathetic of what's really going on in social media and educate ourselves as OGs, as leaders, as teachers and everybody. Once once we are educated on it, then we can come up with the plan to actually take the power away from it. Because right now we don't have it. I think another thing, too, this platform and what you're doing right now, and then y'all did it in the past, is when you have the platforms that they're watching already, bring this kind of stuff on. Because if you go to urbanspecialist.org, you sign up for University, you can go into OGU, tell your story. But then the credibility that you guys bring with real life of where people are watching it already, regular media we have a big uh, press conference on the first but you know say cheese all of those doing stuff like this is going to make the difference too yeah shout out to you man i've been holding down for years man yeah uh, yeah i'm gonna speak uh hey i you know I, I would say uh i may i i was doing some stuff man to make uh social media work work good for me with the kids right yeah and like throwing basketball tournaments and stuff like that you know he was saying hood to hood but we started something last year called Hood to Good. And it was trying to take the kids and in the adults too, though, cause adults, I know our age, we was big about our neighborhood back in the day. So we was trying to take the kids from a hood mindset to a good mindset. And as we were bringing all the kids out there in the adults that was there too, because we put the dust playing after the kids. So just saying we had the live DJ and things like that. So before every game, what we did was we got all the kids together and their parents, I'm saying, so we made all the kids ex exchange uh, Instagram uh, information and they, they Facebook if they had Facebook and things of that nature. So, and you know, the, the, the point was to, to allow them to understand that, hey man, these, this dude you just met right here from another uh, neighborhood, he probably be your, your college roommate. He probably be your next business partner in the future or something like that. So we just gave him a different look on how to look at it. And then as time going, I'm saying, some of them still in contact with guys that they met for the first time last year. So I'm saying, you know, we can make, we can make this stuff work for the good, man. I'm saying oh, yeah. in the midst of all the bad. Hey man, I, uh, I, want, I want to piggyback off that because social media is just a tool. That's how social media is. Social media is driven by a culture. And uh, I, I don't know how many people agree or disagree with this, but I, I stand on this uh, pretty strong. My, my, my cousin LV, who introduced me to the uh, urban specialist, uh, you know, prominent rapper here in Dallas a little while back, uh, we used to always have these debates and arguments. And what I told him is that the culture has become my God. The culture has become my God and, and, and the culture is choking us. And, and if we're being completely honest, it is a, a, a catch-22, a love-hate relationship, because everybody here can identify that we have glamorized hip-hop culture and we've glamorized things that are really to our detriment. And the reason I say it's our God is because when I really found spirituality and when I really found, in my opinion, what God is, those principles begin to override the culture. The culture is what took me down the wrong path and like Pac, a ball, MJG, Suave House, all you know, all this the stuff that we grew up on, and it made me walk to the liquor store and look at JoJo and look at him up and down and be like, man, fuck this nigga, I don't even know him, 
You dig what I'm saying? But the culture put that into my the culture put that into my DNA, right? So 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 if we but but we also came up on this, so we love it, but it's killing us. And I think that Black America in general is going through a major identity crisis because we can't shame this thing that raised us and brought us so much, but it's also bringing us our detriment. So until we come to grips with this core thing that we're speaking about right now in the culture and really look at it honestly uh, and see how we can redefine these things, I think that we're going to always be fighting against ourselves dramatically. Uh, the second thing I'm going to transition to real quick is mental health. Mental health has always been looked at as stigmatized, something white people do, but I myself just started going to therapy not too long ago. And it has been very impactful to my personal development, my emotional IQ, so forth and so on. So beginning to move with the energy that Brother Mar had a few minutes ago, he was standing on that. He really believed in it. He wasn't half footing that. And when men and women start to really stand on like, man, look, this is what I'm doing. I didn't lost too much. I'm not trying to appease you, brother. I'm here because I love you, right? Uh, I think that that type of energy is very important. Um, the last thing I spoke at a middle school a couple a couple months ago, and a principal had brought me in, and he was like, "Man, I thought you was going to be talking about like some some prison tough talk and all this stuff they shouldn't do right and do wrong and so forth and so on." But I came in with one simple question with a group of alternative school students, right, who students been getting into trouble, and I asked them a simple question: Are you at peace? Are you at peace? And that broke down so many different walls because I can't really compete against the hip hop and the clothes and the jewelry and all that stuff. But I know inside your heart is a war going on. I know a war is going on. So when we begin to break things from a spirituality standpoint, mental health standpoint, I think we stand a better chance. Uh, oh, go ahead, Luke. Can I drive something real quick? Because yeah. I actually got to go get my son. He texts me. I got to go pick him up. Definitely. Not. Go ahead, please. Yeah. 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 This thing. I'm a daddy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I love him. But one thing I want to say, I know we, we focusing on the negative, but in my opinion, and I'm going to use him for example, um, I believe the social media, the Instagram and stuff like that, bro, is one of the best things that can happen to the youth. And I want to let me, let me tell you what I mean, though, and, and, and the adults. I don't mean on the negative stuff they watch. I mean on the positive, motivational things. The search engine inside of it, like like when we were younger, a lot of stuff was hid that weren't in books that they weren't talking. The information is out there. It's where they search. We're not sending them in the right directions for certain things to search and look up. You know what I mean? There are certain pages that feed so much information to you that you can't find in a book sometimes, you know? And so I feel like the direction where we need to shoot them at because you asking about the positive of social media I feel like the information is there it is just the digging and the uncovering of it and I, I look at it because um, I had my little boy phone while uh, he was doing something so I logged in on his Instagram and I'm scrolling and unlike my Instagram you know it pops up your feed uh, the rapper feed might see the dead feed, you know, these other things, the big booty feed, these is what's popping up on mine. Whether I follow them or not, but it's, it's following my algorithm. When I'm on his, man, all I see is motivational, every, everyone, motivational quote. This is the, my youngest one that started a business. He's 13. When I look at his Instagram, all I see is motivational quotes. Uh, the ones where they got the one little things where Kevin Gates talking or um, how to start this, how to start. It's like the, his feed doesn't have any of that I've in it. So it's what you put into it and what you search for is what adds, you know, adds to what you gain out of it. So I feel like the social media is a wonderful thing, but I just feel like the direction where it's pushed at, that's what needs to have. Like perfect example, no lie, like when you guys post something, whatever you post, y'all tag, you know, hey, such and such right here. And see, we're getting that feed because we're following, you know what I mean? But I feel like there's not enough, um, 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 how can I say it? The big platforms is putting it out. Um, when you got their attention, you know, you got to put a little, little sugar on the medicine to make it go down. Right. But I feel like it could be more positive, uh, stuff that you could drop to where it, yeah, you might not get a uh, hundred thousand likes, a hundred thousand views, but you might get 500 and that 500 takes them to see something else that they never even thought of seeing and they wouldn't even been looking for because they only watching your page. They don't want to watch another one. So if you slide one inside of all that hundred, it's like, dang, 
you might have caught somebody out. Yeah, it's not gonna go out the rhythm stupid, right. but it's getting a point across. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But um, I thank everybody out yeah, here, and I thank y'all. I gotta, I gotta slide. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, New Diamond, Mr. Lucha Man, Blessings King. Um, thank you so much for that. Now, I gotta thank ask, you for um, that. Now, you, we all got change maker shirts on, so I have to ask um, the best way to change, uh, to make changes, uh, you know, laws and policies. I'm just curious of what do y'all feel for the youth? What type of laws or policies should be introduced, if any, to help the youth? So that's my expertise. Uh, uh, let me get professional. <laughs> so my expertise is just that. I accidentally found out, um, got in, in this field. It wasn't something I was looked for, looked for. Nobody introduced it to me. It was just me being a serial entrepreneur, and I saw policies and stuff wasn't working. And I've done a lot of things in life. And I did it because I needed to make money. But the policies that I started learning, if I talk about it, we'll be here forever. But don't be. The, but again, <laughs> no. The first time that I realized that policies and 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 civil and working with them would change, it was when I was talking about the situation when Anton, when we we were just business owners who, but we had something in us and we wasn't going to give up, and we were able to bring people together. Um, and, and we applaud We do think a, a thing was an organization called Unlike Collaborators. That was one of the first times that I seen Unlike Collaborators. I didn't know what I was doing, right? I wasn't a real full activist. I had something brewing in me. And what I found out those policies and that policy mean, I go ask those kids, like it's things that's in effect. It is things like, um, I'm, I'm going to school right now. And when I learned what community mapping was, I immediately started saying, we got to get the kids in our schools to community map so they can tell us what we need. When I talk to our council member, my council member is under, under 40. And I told him, you are under 40 and I've been telling you for two terms, go out to our children so that you can know the policies so that our district, which is District 7, can change. And in order to do that, you can identify with them because you're under 40. I need you to listen to them, them policies that's in place where they don't have enough after school programs. I can be honest with you. We had a lot going on when we were kids. When we were kids, there was the boys clubs, girls clubs basketball, midnight basketball, those different things. These things have been taken away from my kids because they thought that they didn't want them. Just now they're playing catch up. So making policies where the in, 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 in the inner in the city that park and rick is free. Those policies have to be changed. Things where our children are being able to to have different um learning learning opportunities in school. Every child cannot learn in a classroom in a traditional setting. Children learn different. Some are visual, some, the computers are great learners. They don't read books, they don't like books. We have to ask our kids about when it comes to policies. Um, okay, so two things real quick. I, I wanted to piggyback on what Mr. Lucci said in reference to um, the algorithms and things like that. First of all, I wanted to pay homage to you guys because you guys are the shift that we need, right? You guys have definitely stepped it up and you guys have definitely uh, planted a seed of positivity and shift in the culture. So we definitely want to say thank you for that and thank you for controlling the narrative. So that's something that needs to be done. So as you continue to set the tone, you set the tone very high. So people, hey, the youngsters will come up and say, hey, this is what street stars are doing. It's because you guys look cool to me. You got the chains on. You got the look, definitely. But then you also can speak <laughs> the language, time. right? Yeah. You can definitely speak the language. So that's the one thing. And then as far as policies go, I would have to say... Um, Financial literacy, right? Yes. So financial literacy is something that definitely has to be done. Like Tab was saying, you have to teach the kids how to go into those room rooms and control them and know that it doesn't matter where I'm from. This is what I represent and this is what I know. Teach the kids the numbers because numbers don't lie. One plus one is two, right? right. You, that's, that's across the board. It doesn't even matter. If I need to get to D, I got to go through A, B, and C first in order to get to D. So you have to make sure that you implement that into those kids' mindsets. My son is eight years old, and he's already doing 17 timetables. He knows how to do 17 timetables. Like He's already doing Please. those type of things, but I had to realize that myself that it's about those numbers and you build up that confidence and or and when you build up that confidence in those kids that's when they can go in and cause a shift and they cause havoc so that's my thing
Yeah, I remember black kids used to be scared to read out loud. Get in front of class and read. I ain't about to go to dinner reading. That's why we got the book. There you go. There you go. Hey man, and this and this and I just want to say, man, this is good. And I know we got to wrap up because I don't want to keep us keep us going all night. Sound, you know. I just, you know, I think this is big. I want to say shout out to all these brothers who who sat here, uh, squash what they doing to just share this message. I want Thank to give you. a shout out to you guys for, as Veronica said, providing this platform. It's very, it's and, I very want, and I want to say this to everybody that's listening, because I know you see brothers from all over the city, neighborhoods. You didn't get left off bad and bougie, so don't even think about that. Right. This not Sean Cotton top uh, rappers of the city listen you didn't make it this ain't what this is because we believe it's a whole bunch of more brothers and sisters that's out there that can be sitting on these couches what a representing what a how can they, how can they uh, tap in with the movement man they gotta go to Corey just said to go to Urban Specialist uh, and sign up for Unite Versity and we kind of we try to provide an ecosystem for brothers like this you know so we can highlight and I'm gonna say this man to everybody that's listening out there it is a place for you, man. It, it's a place for brothers and sisters like us who been through some stuff. We probably have backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera. It's a place for you. It's a need for you right now. You know, you probably sitting on the couch saying, man, or looking at your phone saying, man, how can I be a part of that? You can be a part of it. You have a part to play. We believe everybody can contribute. Your story needs to be heard by somebody. You just got to get off the couch and get in the game. You know what I'm saying? We have too many spectators Directing the game from the stands We need people who are in the game Who are not just talking about what they're doing But they are walking Everybody up here is, field. is actually on the field Doing some work And you just got to do some work You don't have to be big You don't have to be uh, grand It just got to be You got to get out there and do something Get out there and see some young person at the, at the And have a conversation with them man. You just never know how your story Your, your medicine can help somebody else and get in, get involved in the game. That's all we saying. That's all this is about getting in the game. Getting in the game, and I appreciate all the brothers and the sisters. What's going on, uh, June? June first. Yeah? June, June first, man. June first. It's my birthday. June my first. June first. June first. June first. June first. June first is JoJo birthday. Yeah. Now June. <laughs> the love the pot. The north that north Dallas. <laughs> Hey, but now June first, we have a, a press conference that's coming. We're gonna do it at fourteen oh one Botham John at their special headquarters. And what we calling on influencers? We're gonna have a radio personnel. We're gonna have a live remote. We're gonna have news media. And what we want to do is show. We came here first. Yeah, we can't do like we can't hear first, but Process. we want to show the rest of the city and invite the rest of the city to come out and be a part of something. Whether yeah. it's what Tubbs doing, whether what Moore doing, Seneca, whoever we don't care who doing something. We just saying come on and, and be a part of it. And then lastly, we have a uh, radio show on one hundred five dot seven nine thirty Central Standard Time, serving on Sundays. Where we we provide a platform for change makers like this or uh, anybody that y'all know that's doing some amazing work in the community. We've got to give them that platform. And thank y'all for allowing us to be on this because like yeah, she said, sure. this this ain't going to get 100,000 views, uh, uh, you know, yeah, 1,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. shirts. It's not going to get that. It's going it's to it's make somebody we, we say, change, bro. it's going to make somebody say, Man, I want to be a part of that. And if we yeah. just make one person say, or we make one parent say, man, I'm I'm gonna have hope. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get back in the game. Man, we done did our job. This is worth it. Big yeah, Jay, Big sure. Jay, is it worth it? Can I can they buy the shirt? Can they get the shirt? They can get the shirt too. The shirt's on yeah, the website. Can I buy a hood of my shirt? Man, you can buy a shirt, man. Look, 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 look. We got a chin, y'all. Here's the Heal people, heal people. Heal people, heal people. Change people, change people. Change people, change people. Real work will work. Real work will work. Real work will work. Real work will work. Heal people, heal people. Heal people, heal people. Change people, change people. Change people, change people. And that's what we doing. That's what we all doing. Yeah. Hey, and I know y'all ain't never did this before. Yeah. Y'all ain't never did this. We all gonna do this today, man. I'm gonna pass the mic to Big J. Big J, man, I just want you to, you know, pray us out. Cause they, you know, yeah. we gotta, we believe, we spiritual right yeah. now. So I want yes. you to pray us out, man. Cause they ain't never did this before. Yeah. Yeah. We need you, Big J. We need you to do that for us, man. Say before he pray, 
Listen, we taking all love deposits for the pull up to the pump. Love deposit and, and Highland Hills. Nah, for real, man. You know what I mean? The, the simplest definition, a lot of what's missing in our community, man, is love, duty, and service. And the simplest definition of love is to give without expecting nothing in return, but you got to do it in a manner that inspires others to give. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, Saturday, June 3rd, we're in Highland Hills giving out free gas. You pull up, you might get a full up. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about we feeding you everything. You ain't got to get out your car, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Love the pause. Well, let me. Well, uh, hold on. Let me. Hold on. Let me advertise right quick. The hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hello. I got twenty five kids, six adults. We take into uh, Jellystone Park on the twenty third through the twenty fifth. It's our first trip. We taking them away from the hood in the middle of the summer. Any donations count. We get to cook everything. Hey, listen. We need. We need the funding. You can hit. Hey, send it to Anton so I can make sure he get it. The link. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The link is you can you can zell zell at uh the at the Village Bridge Center at gmail.com and you can uh, cash app at the Village Bridge Inc. And you know, you can also call Anton. I pick up money too. Like 20. Kiddo! 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 Hey, real, real quick, I got one. I got one too, man. Oh, hey, look, hey, look, June seventeenth, man, at Thurgood Marshall, we uh, we having a community dodgeball game called We Dodge Balls, Not Bullets, man. So um, oh, man, it's, yeah. a, it's against uh, DPD and everything. So you get a chance to throw throw balls at the police and everything else. But it's a way to where we can get out some, you know, channel aggression out there the legal way, man. So uh, we showing up. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's Father's Day weekend. So happy Father's Day that weekend to all the fathers here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Already y'all, let's be about that action, y'all. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Most High, the God of Gods, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am, the masculine and feminine power that reigns over us in heaven. First of all, we want to thank you, Lord, for bringing this union together. Thank you, Bruce Wayne, for having a mind to work for the people and to put us together right here in this room, Lord, to be a change maker. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're about to do in these kids' lives, in the adults' lives. We know that you're going to change minds, change hearts, and change directions. We love you, Lord, first and foremost. We're going to continue to send praises and prayers up as you send mercy, favor, and blessings down. Lord, if I had a million miles, a million tongues, I couldn't thank you enough for the blessings you're about to bestow upon all of us in this room and all those that we touch, Lord. Lord, you say we have even the faith of a mustard seed. You will grant us the power to move a mountain. Move all these mountains out of our way, Lord. And anything and anybody who means the movement and positive movement, if they mean it any harm, Lord, move them out of the way, Lord. And we thank you so much right now. In the most high name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.